Yo, what is going on, you guys? It's your boy, King Sanders here, and we are back with another day of sports betting. This is going to be for Friday, payday, May 13th slate of NBA and MLB action. I'm super excited to dive into it. Um, at the time of recording this video, there is still a game going on. The Phoenix Suns versus the uh, Dallas Mavericks game is still currently going on. So one of our results is it's still up in the air, but it's definitely not looking good. So I'm going to chalk it up as an L for now. And if we end up winning it, then I'll go ahead and bring out the shades for tomorrow. But um, as of right now, it's not looking good. But we'll go ahead and talk about that here in just a minute. First things first, I did just want to go ahead and say that we are on the road to 7,000 subscribers. So if you guys are new, make sure you guys do like, comment, subscribe, and turn on that notification bell so you guys know whenever I post. Next, I did just want to go ahead and give a quick shout out here to all of our members here on the channel. Thank you guys so much for everything that you guys do. And thank you guys so much for giving such a small channel such a big chance, as I always say. Um, it truly does mean more than you guys will ever know just to be showing support on the channel. So thank you guys so much for that. Now, without any further ado, we'll go ahead and do a quick recap. As of yesterday, we had a profitable day. Man, it feels good to say that again. It truthfully has been so few and far between. Um, it was a terrible month so far, but the fact that we did see some profit, I know it's a only a little bit, but profit is profit at the end of the day, um, and we hit our plus value play. So all of these things, man, I, I'm just it, it truly brings a smile to my face. I'm really excited. So we'll go ahead and talk about it. We had Bam Adebayo under 27.5 PRAs um, versus the 76ers. This one made me nervous, not because Bam Adebayo was like scoring a lot, but because he literally did not miss a field goal. He shot 5 for 5 from the field. He had 10 points and 8 boards. Bam Adebayo, without missing a shot, only took 5 shots. You would think that they would give it to him, but they really didn't need to because the Heat were just in control that almost that entire game. Jimmy Butler was absolutely fantastic during that game, and so they just really didn't need to rely on Bam Adebayo, and he was super, super passive in this game. He did not want to take any chances going up against Embiid, which is exactly what I predicted, and it ended up working out for us, so that one did end up working. Then we did have Chris Paul over four and a half rebounds. He had zero at halftime, so I'm, I'm still gonna, just going to chalk it up. And if he somehow grabs five rebounds in the second half, then hey, you know, it works for me. Chris Paul had zero points, zero rebounds, and zero assists through the first quarter. Um, so, you know, he's just having an absolutely abysmal game. I guess I should have taken his under in points um, or, you know, PRAs or whatever, but you never know. He could have a, a fantastic second half, and I could be just, you know, putting my foot in my mouth. But then we did have the Mets minus one and a half. Like I said, I thought that this one was a lock, um, and they ended up winning by three, I believe. They were up 4-0. They were about to complete the shutout, but I think with uh, two outs left in the ninth, someone hit a home run for the Nationals to make it 4-1, but then the Mets were able to close it out. So they did end up winning by, obviously – two or more and we got that plus value play not sure why it was plus value but hey we'll always take some free plus value so that one ended up working out for us once again we do have one play from each of the nba play or from the nba games on today then we do have a full slate of mlb once again so we do have one play from that as well so without any further ado let's go ahead and dive into it our first play of the day we're gonna be taking drew holiday we're taking his over five and a half rebounds here versus boston at plus 105 odds this is kind of like that Mets line. I just don't really understand why it's plus value. Maybe they're wanting you to lean the other direction because a lot of people are scared to bet plus value plays. But when the stats back it, I'm ready to go for it. So if you take a look at Drew Holiday's game logs for this series specifically, he has gone over versus Boston in four of them. Um, he only went under in one of them, and I think he finished with um, – I think he finished with – like three or four. I can't remember the exact number. I forgot to write it down. But regardless, he f he hit the over in four of them. So I will definitely take my odds with that. He's been, re he's been really good pretty much in every aspect of scoring, passing, rebounding. Drew Holiday has just been an absolutely great player here in this series. And so hopefully he can do that for us once again. Also, in the last seven games, Boston, they, they have allowed the 13th most rebounds per game to opposing point guards. I know that's nothing crazy, but it is a little bit of an edge. They've been giving up a decent amount of rebounds there to that point guard position, um, and I do think we could see more of that once again. Also, in the last three games, Boston has allowed the fourth most rebounds per game in general, so that is kind of a pretty key stat there. Most of the time, Boston doesn't give up a whole lot of rebounds, but here in this series, they truly have. Also, in the last three games, Boston has held Milwaukee 
to 41.8% from the field, which is the best or like the lowest field goal percentage in the entire NBA. Um, So I think that that is saying a lot about how great this Boston defense is. So they do force a lot of misses. With that being said, a lot of those could fall in the hands of Drew Holiday. And it's definitely not like the uh, Milwaukee defense has been bad either. In their last three games, they have held um, Boston to 45.8% from the field, which is the 11th lowest in the entire NBA. So a lot of missed shots here. It's still a pretty, you know, decent over under. Both these teams have been playing pretty fast paced. Um, They allow a lot of rebounds and they allow a lot of those rebounds to the point guard position. And Drew Holiday has been really good this series. So I'm going to be taking my chance with it. We're going to be riding with it. Drew Holiday over five and a half rebounds here versus Boston at plus 105 odds. Now our second play of the day. We're going to be taking Tyus Jones, not a guy that's that's really talked about very often. We're taking his over 16 and a half points here versus Golden State at minus 110 odds. Tyus Jones without John Morant is a truly good basketball player. And I think that these books are just kind of sleeping on him, truly. Maybe they know something that I don't, but I'm going to definitely be taking my odds here because without Ja, uh, Tyus Jones has had 21, 19, 5, 24, and 25 points. He scored 20-plus points in three of his last five games without Ja, and he one of the games he finished with 19, so it's not even like he was – like he was that far under under 20. So he's covered this line in four of his last five without Ja. And also in the last seven games, the Golden State Warriors, they've actually allowed the fifth most points per game to opposing point guards. And obviously a lot of that is Ja Morant. But Tyus Jones has been doing good at scoring the basketball as well. And also in the last three, uh, both these teams have been playing at a super fast pace. Memphis has been fourth in, in pace in their last three games, and Golden State has been fifth. So both these teams top five in pace. They allow a lot of points to that point guard p- position, and Tyus Jones has just been absolutely fantastic without John Morant. Also, Tyus Jones has seen a very heavy workload as well. In game four, he saw 41 minutes, and I think we see more of that again. In game five, he only saw 24 minutes. Um, He still did hit the over. He had 21 points, but, I mean, they won by, like, a crazy amount, so they didn't even need Tyus Jones to really play. I think this is going to be a much closer game. I would be absolutely mind blown if the Golden State Warriors ended up losing by 40 again. Um, So I do think Tyus Jones is going to have to play a lot more of this game, kind of like he did in game four, and I definitely think that he's – He has the capabilities to hit this over. So we're going to be riding with it. Tyus Jones over 16 and a half points versus Golden State at minus 110 odds. Now for our MLB play today, we're taking another plus value. We're taking Padres money line here versus the Braves at plus 125 odds. Now, if you take a look at it, the Padres on the road have been actually a really solid team. They are 10 and five on the road. So winning 67% of the time on the road and the Padres following a loss, which they did have just recently, they are nine and two. So they have been really, really solid following a loss. They really take that to heart and they love to bounce back after that. Also the Braves, I know that they have been the hotter team as of right now. They have won three of their last four games, but I definitely think that does change today. Also, the Braves, they've been they've been kind of up and down this year, um, and especially at home, they are just nine and nine. So you know they're five they're five hundred, but um, following a win which they did have here recently, they are four and ten following a win. So we're definitely going to be riding with it here. Going to be taking my chances. We're taking the Padres money line here versus the Braves at plus one twenty five odds. So that is going to do it for today's video. If you guys did enjoy it, make sure you guys do like, comment, subscribe, and turn on that notification bell so you guys know whenever I post. Um, Next, I did just want to go ahead and say that we are on the road to 7,000 subscribers still, so make sure that if you guys are new, make sure that you guys are subbed. Hopefully, we can have two profitable days once again. Um, I, you know, Like I said, we had a really cold streak there pretty much through April and the start of May. I'm thinking we're turning it around. I truly do. So hopefully we can. Um, But, yeah, that's going to do it for me. This is King Center signing out. Peace.